So I thought I'd do a quick video on an IRF 510 uh, based uh, linear amp that I've uh, been building up here. Uh, and this is uh, one that's based on uh, a document I found on the QRP guys uh, site. So I'll include a link below. Um, that amp uh, needed a 1 watt input and so I thought what I'd do is combine a simple preamp with the uh, with the amp so I can drive it with a uh, you know roughly 100 to 200 um, uh, millivolt peak to peak signal so here's the circuit here and I'll, I'll include uh, links to uh, this circuit up on github uh, and the LT spice models that I'm going to be talking about so there's basically uh, I guess three major components here um, this is the uh, the PA here and here's the IRF 510 the final uh, transistor. Uh, this is a uh, harmonic trap filter um, and here is the preamp over here which consists of uh, 2N3904 uh, and uh, 2SC5706 transistor and uh, you know the uh, coupling between the two, those two stages is handled by these two T3743s uh, with different turns. Finally, down the bottom here, I've got a simple switch. Let me just uh, let me just pan into that so you can see that a bit better. I've got a simple switch here that, on five volts input, uh, basically this FET turns on, which grounds this line here, uh, and that turns this P-type FET on and provides 12 volts to the collectors of the first two stages of the um, of the uh, amplifier and also uh, provides 5 volts here as the bias to the, um, uh, to the um, IRF 510. So you can see here that bias, that 5 volt bias comes in through this adjustable pot here and that's what sets the bias on the gate of the IRF 510. So a couple other things. Uh, firstly, um, this uh, filter here is, uh, uh, I, I have seen it referred to as a harmonic trap filter. Uh, and basically what happens is uh, this is 50 ohms here on the output and it presents uh, 8 ohms at uh, 14 megahertz um, to, the, uh, to the collector, to not the collector, to the drain of the IRF 510. Um, so that's kind of an interesting. And uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll show the operation of that in LT Spice and how the impedance and the uh, impedance matching changes over frequency. Okay, so let's have a look at this uh, harmonic trap filter in LT Spice. Uh, do a uh, AC signal simulation here over 12 to 16 megahertz and see what we see. And I've actually just done that. So here's the uh, graph here. Uh, this sort of lighter shade is the phase um, diagram here. And this is the uh, impedance in ohms of that trap there. So you can see there uh, the uh, actually the minimum there is at 14 megahertz and it is um, a, approximately 8.48 uh, ohms impedance in other words there's 8.48 ohms of impedance that pr is presented uh, to the drain of the uh, IRF 510 just walking back through the circuit uh, quickly so uh, off to the right hand side there is the IRF 510 uh, this is a simple uh, trim pot here, a 100 or 500 ohm trim pot, uh, which uh, acts as a gain control to this stage of the amplifier. Uh, I had to insert, this is a 1K resistor here. If I didn't have this 1K resistor uh, right here, the, uh, the uh, circuit would get into uh, oscillations. And then uh, there's a simple two-stage uh, uh, preamp here consisting of a 2N3904 and a 2SC5706. Um, interestingly, um, I got very poor results. Uh, there's, there's plenty of sellers on eBay that sell these SMD versions of the 2SC5706. I got very poor results uh, using those. Uh, I, did, I did have some genuine DigiKey uh, 2SC5706 uh, and they gave me pretty good results. But anyway, let's uh, just pan over to the uh, to the circuit, we'll, uh, I'll just highlight those pieces on the circuit, and then we'll do a uh, then we'll do a simple test of the amplifier. Okay, so here's the uh, here's the um, the board that I've built up here. The uh, input signal comes in from the 
right hand side here and exits out the uh, left hand side. Uh, here and he right here is the uh, low pass filter uh, at 14 megahertz, that harmonic trap filter. Uh, here's the IRF 510 here and its attendant um, uh, RFC choke. And then moving back through the circuit here is the preamp here and that consists of uh, a 2N3904 transistor which is right here and the 2SC5706 uh, right here uh, and this is the uh, genuine DigiKey one. Just down the bottom here we have the, there's a 5 volt regulator here which uh, sets the bias through this 10k pot here to the gate of the IRF510. And that's pretty much uh, all, that's, uh, all that's on the circuit here. Again, uh, as I said, I'll include uh, uh, the, um, the uh, Ikikad version of this circuit, and that'll be up on the GitHub repo. Uh, just one final note. Uh, here is that uh, input switch that I mentioned, consisting of this BS170 here, and uh, then this P-type uh, MOSFET, which acts as the, uh, the voltage switch there. Uh, and on... Uh, on 5 volts coming in here, this line here uh, goes to the supply voltage. Got a bit of a bodge wire here. I made a mistake on the circuit and didn't want to spin the board again, so I just put a little bodge wire in. So let's put a signal into the um, amplifier and uh, and uh, you know, see what sort of uh, output we get from it. Just to sort of quickly walk through the test setup here. Uh, the signal's coming from my uh, signal generator that you've seen before here. And we're going to start with a 100 millivolt peak to peak uh, input signal. Uh, I've got on the output here a 50 ohm dummy load right here. More than enough to handle. And then I'm just probing, bear with me, I'm just probing uh, uh, right at the, uh, the very output here. So let's uh, fire this up and uh, I'll move up to the oscilloscope and we'll see the output signal. Okay, so first test is going to be 100 millivolts peak to peak on the input here. Let me just turn that switch on and then you can see the output signal there. And that's uh, just a little under 20 volts peak to peak or just a little under a watt. So let's uh, move the, go up to 200 millivolts peak to peak on the, on the input there. And you can see the signal has gone up to around about uh, 37 volts peak to peak. 37 volts peak to peak is around about uh, 3.6 watts. Let me turn that off. Um, this doesn't say anything for linearity though. So what I'll do is I'll inject a, uh, an AM signal in there. And we will see uh, starting at uh, 100 millivolts peak to peak. Bear with me. Um, Let's do a 100 millivolt peak to peak signal. The AM depth here is 50%. Uh, let's fire that up and we'll see uh, that on the input. You can see there, there's that AM signal, but let's go out to... Uh... So there's that uh, AM signal. Um, now I'm sampling at about... Uh... Bear with me, let me see what that is. That's about... Um... 500 microseconds per, per division there. So I'm injecting a one kilohertz signal, again at 14.0 uh, megahertz. And you can see there, nice linear output. But let's see what happens when we change the, uh, change the amplitude of that AM signal up to 200 millivolts. So let's go up to 200 millivolts again. Let's get into run, turn the run stop off. And there, let me adjust that again. Hit run stop. So you can see now that uh, the AM signal isn't that sort of perfect. Uh, this should be a perfect sinusoid up the top here. You can see it's starting to flat top here um, at uh, 200 millivolts uh, peak to peak on the input. And you'll see as I go up to 300 millivolts peak to peak on the input. Let me just do that. Now it's really starting to flat top out. So obviously beyond 200 millivolts peak to peak on the input um, is where this amplifier goes out of linearity. So anyway, um, like I said, uh, all the circuits and the LT Spy stuff's up on the GitHub repo. I thought uh, I thought you might enjoy this uh, this quick video. Um, if you have any questions, um, please drop a comment.
catch you later.